The way you price your work can depend on many circumstances of the project. So before you quote a project, make sure you watch this video all the way through the end. Firstly, the most obvious thing is that you want to understand all the requirements of the project. That way you know that you're not undervaluing your work. Obviously, larger projects often have more complexity and also need higher resources in order to complete. But that doesn't mean that smaller size projects need to be charged less in order to create 3D visualizations for them. That's why it's very important to discuss early on with your clients on what their expectations are in terms of the quality, what effort will be needed to be put in the work. This can include factors such as the size of the building, also the different scenes that you're going to be rendering, the length of the animation if you're going to create a video walkthrough, even if they need a specific type of furniture to be modeled. Now during the negotiation process, it's very important to kind of get an idea on what the client's budget is. I like to ask questions to the client early on like how much have you paid for 3D renderings previously, how much are 3D renderings worth to you and stuff like this to kind of get an idea of what the client's budget is. And once you kind of get the idea, you can also offer alternatives on pricing and you can kind of know what you can offer within that budget or what kind of realism level they can expect within the finances that they have available for you. Also, a very important topic that you do want to talk with a client before you actually start doing the projects is the limit of revisions that are included within the package that you will give them. I myself have struggled a lot with this in the past and that's just because it is my fault that I didn't clarify from the beginning how many changes can be made throughout the process. Obviously design work is never 100% finished so a lot of clients are going to end up nitpicking little things. Honestly if I'm being 100% transparent with you, clients that I've gotten from Germany, Scandinavian countries and kind of things like that have always, always dragged the project way too long to the point it's not even worth to complete it. It's very important to have those limitations early on when you're working with that kind of the world, or at least that's from my experience. And yes, I'm pissed off at all of you, so please don't watch my videos. Not nah, just kidding, but really for me, I've always added two revisions within the price that I give to my clients. And then any revisions after that are going to be charged extra, depending on what kind of effort is needed to be put in in order to make those changes. Now, once you have agreed on all of those points with the clients, there are a few options you can go for when charging. So charging at an hourly rate is very common for 3D designers and all creative people on this industry. Now to determine your hourly rate, you need to take a look at a few different factors. First and foremost, you have to calculate the amount of hours that you think are needed to be put in that project. This includes the time it takes to do lighting, to do 3D models, to create materials, visual settings, post-production, all of that. One thing that people do miss a lot when they're calculating the amount of hours that it will take to do the job is also the amount of time it takes to communicate with the client, the amount of time it takes to jump on Zoom meetings and all of that. So please, 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 take into consideration that all of those take time because at the end of the day, if you don't calculate little things like that, you're not going to be as profitable as you think you are. Now, I think it's very important in order to gain your client's trust to actually make a full breakdown of how much time everything is going to take. That way they know what is going on and they will kind of be updated with the progress of their project. Now, another way that you can price your 3D renders is through a fixed price. And usually this comes with a fixed price per square meter or square feet. Now, I myself don't like this type of pricing and I've never priced my work that way. I think it's more common in third world countries because that's how the architectural industry works and that is included in my country where a lot of architects charge by square meter and stuff like that. So try to stay away from that. Obviously, if you're a beginner, you cannot really afford to refuse work. The best option for you is going to be to charge with the next option that I'm going to show you. And that is value based pricing. Now this focuses on the value your services bring to the clients. And it also is going to take a deep understanding on how valuable 3D renders are for your clients. Now, this obviously takes a little bit more understanding on how you can get them the return on investment on the money that they're putting away for 3D rendering. And obviously that can be for marketing, that can be for communicating their ideas to the clients, that can be to pitching ideas to potential investors or even to win architectural competitions. I mentioned previously that the amount you can charge can matter highly on the values that you possess. So I'm going to give you a guideline in terms of what I see usually people with the skill level that you have 
charge in the industry and what I think makes sense. But before I give you all of that guidelines, make sure to click the first link in the description to join a program where I will go in live calls with you and help you get to six figures with a 3D rendering business in just six weeks. Now, the first level is for people who are just starting out in the 3D rendering field. It is essential to offer competitive pricing. That way, the clients have less to lose when they're choosing you and in their mind, they can risk working with you. Pricing for beginner level 3D renders typically range from $10 to $50 an hour and also somewhere between $300 to $500 per render. As I said, taking into consideration all of the different services circumstances that can be within the project. The second level is for people that feel like they're in an intermediate group of 3D visualizations. I think that in this level, you can charge anywhere between $50 to $100 per hour, and you can also charge anywhere between $500 to $1,000 per render. Obviously, this can depend a lot, and you cannot charge the same amount of dollars for three different views of the same object, for example, but you kind of have to take into consideration when you give a full price on that. The second level is when you are an intermediate 3D visualizer. And obviously when you're in this level, you have a deeper understanding of how projects work. You have a very good portfolio and you can charge anywhere between $50 to $100 per hour and also $500 to $1,000 per render. But keep in mind, you don't want to charge a set base render even if you have the same object just from a different direction. A lot of clients will see that a little bit as scammy because you will already have the model and you will just need to change the angles and have the render time i'm not saying do it for free but keep in mind that the first render most of the time is more expensive than just changing the angle of the same model the third level is for 3d artists that have a lot of experience in the field and they can complete complex projects with an efficient time frame now keep in mind that artists like this can get paid up to $200 per hour or even more, and also can get paid up to $3,000 per render, if not more in some cases. Now, this takes a lot of time, dedication, and a lot of practice to get to this level. However, it's definitely doable, and there's a lot of benefits to actually investing effort and time into getting up to here. But if you're not getting clients, you're honestly not even getting the chance to quote their projects. So if you want to learn how you can get 3D rendering clients, make sure to watch the video right here.